Greetings one and all, this is Rhythm Works and welcome to my channel, seven hours after Sony's presentation at E316. What did I think? What was my highlights? What was my lowlights? Well, I'm going to tell you after this. Well, first and foremost, I have to say this. I've watched the Xbox, well, I watched the Microsoft press conference, I've watched Ubisoft's press conference, and now I have watched Sony's press conference. And I have to say, without a shadow of a doubt, Sony's press conference was the most slickest, was the most stylish, it was the most well put together presentation. There was less cringeworthy moments, there was less awkward moments, there was less waffling about the games they just basically just rolled them stacked them stacked them rolled them rolled them stacked them and that's how a games press conference needs to basically run that's how it needs to run just give us the games give us the games keep us guessing very strategically placed games were in the trailers i have to admit um so for me days gone looked like a game like Dead Rising, but with a bit of soul. They opened it with God of War, which I'm not a fan of, but watching the gameplay of that looked pretty impressive. You know, it kind of took elements from other games and just put it into God of War and just gave it another touch again. Even though I haven't played any of the God of War franchises. Um, Last Guardian, a game that people lost their freaking minds over last year at E3 now getting a release date 25th of October and also Horizon Zero Dawn getting a release date on February the 17th next year um, out of those two games Horizon Zero Dawn yes it looks pretty interesting now when this guy came out I had no idea I had no idea what the hell he was basically there for what he was doing but he looked like he was about to get the thing started and then as he went into the, or the orchestra pit it made complete sense and it was like damn shit and the thing I liked about it is that they played live they played real time they played across all the gameplay demos they played across the trailers they played the intros to the executives that came out on stage now i have to tell you this being a musician right yeah you will see orchestras on tv basically playing but i've got to tell you this if you have got a freaking at least 150 piece orchestra right and you're hearing that shit is pretty much emotional man it's, you know even if you're just basically singing your own shit with an orchestra it's like it's it's an expansion of your music that i just cannot describe so when you're actually watching something like this right you're actually watching a score being played out live in real time it's it's amazing to see and it is doubly amazing to hear and you can't replicate that shit by just watching a tv screen so those people who were actually there at the event were pretty pretty lucky awesome awesome i have to give them props for that um let me see what else was there there was detroit become human which was touted last year which looked pretty interesting um got dialogue trees in there which kind of alters um the gameplay alters the story but we have we've seen those things before right in heavy rain it's quantic dream the same people that made um heavy rain but what really smashed it for me was the arrival and the walk on and the bring out of Hideo Kojima by Andrew House. As soon as I saw Andrew House step up on the stage, yep, yeah, I already knew that it was Hideo's time, Hideo Kojima. And then when he introduced Death Stranding trailer with Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead, it was like. I could imagine the offices at Konami. <laughs> the trailer alone, it was like, what the fuck is this? You know, and it wasn't much, but he packed a whole lot of shit in there. Do you know what I mean? You know, but anything that Hideo Kojima puts out is going to be interesting. You know, it's, it's going to take more than this video to try and get inside the guy's freaking head. 
as his, as to his creativity. Um, what else? Uh, Spider Man, nah, nah, had no interest in Spider Man whatsoever. Uh, my son used to play a lot on PS2, um, but it's not really my thing. Okay, and also uh, mention of the VR, the PlayStation VR, and what they were going to basically bring out. And um, Resident Evil 7 looked pretty interesting, but you know, to me, it's the same kind of fear as the Outland and Until Dawn, those kind of VR experiences. And somebody from IGN made a very valid point. Um, it's not going to be one of those games that. The horror genre is going to either be liked or loathed in that scenario because when you're playing something like Resident Evil or PT or or um, Until Dawn with a controller looking at a TV, you, you you have you have the option to basically you know jump behind your sofa as it were. Whereas when you're playing with VR, you can't cover your face, you can't cover anything, you can't block your vision. It's like your face is being pressed up to the fear that you're going to encounter. So it's going to be pretty interesting how people basically take to horror as a genre in VR. It's going to scare a lot of people to death. Um, and within all of those VR trailers that I saw, um, Star Wars X-Wing Mission was strategically placed. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. It wasn't until like a third of the way halfway through the trailer that I asked myself is this Call of Duty is this Call of Duty and I think lots of other people basically watched and asked the same question at the same time um, did it hold my interest yeah for all of I don't know for all of half of the trailer do you know what I mean you know you can see that Infinity Ward needed to place the video somewhere where you know, it, it just wasn't announced as a Call of Duty game. It had to be put in the mix for people to kind of be sucker punched, as it were, for want of a better phrase. But, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just, I've, I've just had enough of the whole space shooter thing. I really have. I've had it, I've had it up to here, man. Um, and also there was mention of Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, 3 being remastered. Now, it's, it's, it's a retro thing. I remember playing... Crash Bandicoot as a youth, you know, it was nice to see the Easter egg um, in Uncharted 4. Um, yeah, the people lost their minds when he came out, man. Jeez. Lost their freaking minds. They were still cheering. But like I said, you know, the orchestra actually played along to this shit. You know what I mean? It was just awesome, awesome to watch. Um, yeah, going back to Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, it's 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 one of those games that you can introduce your kids and your grandkids to, just like with Ratchet and Clank. Um, me at 52 now. I don't know. You know, gameplay is good. Gameplay is good. Gameplay. I mean, age shouldn't really come into it. You know, I, I'm 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 a strong advocate of having a good play experience in gaming no matter how old you are so it's pretty wrong of me to even put my age into the equation but um there are some games you just grow out of i guess i don't know i don't know um it'd be interesting because you know retro games can be romanticized a whole lot but then when you get back into playing them it's like well yeah it was good at its time in its time but now you know i want to shoot my foes in the face you know what i'm saying <laughs> But yeah, um, Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3 being remastered for the PS4. Should be very interesting. And um, that's more or less it. I mean, what was my highlight? I have to say my highlight was Death Stranding. Death Stranding has to be, you know, I'm not of, I'm not up, sorry. I am not a God of War aficionado. I've never really played them. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I just don't feel those games. But I appreciate, I appreciate the direction that the franchise is basically going. Because after watching, you know, uh, after watching bits of the trilogy, 
years gone by just seem a bit too demonic for me. Do you know what I mean? But that's just me. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I do appreciate good gameplay. And the gameplay that I've seen in God of War has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, my standout was Death Stranding. Even though there was no gameplay, there was just not even a sizzle reel. It was just, I don't know what it was, but you know, seeing Norman Reedus butt naked with marine life being strewn all over the freaking sh shore with a baby attached with an umbilical cord and the soundtrack that he used as well, pretty haunting. You know, that's just Hideo Kojima in a nutshell. Do you know what I mean? You know, you got no time to figure out what's in his head and you're just being bitch slapped with just something that you're going to be amazed by when it comes out. Simple as. So, yeah, that was my highlight. And I have to say, as conferences go, Sony, Sony mopped up the floor, I have to say, because of the fact that the, the material, the games on offer, there was a variation to the games. You know, people didn't make their Dragon's Den pitches and all that bullshit. They just stacked them and rolled them out there and just had you make, make up your mind as to what you was feeling, what you wasn't feeling. Do you know what I mean? You know, with Ubisoft, they kind of used the same kind of technique as they used in past E3s and it's getting a bit stale. You know, that's why I haven't really done anything with, uh, with Ubisoft because, you know, I've, I've, I've put my trust in them for a couple of games and they kind of let me down. So I'm not even giving them the time of day at the minute. You know what I'm saying? You know, so they're going to have to impress the hell out of me before I give mention to them right about now. But with Sony, yeah, I, I was impressed. I was absolutely impressed. The presentation alone of the games, whether or not the games appeal to me or not, was a great presentation. But anyway, that's all for me for now. I um, just want to bid you guys adieu. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And as always, you done know the cool, whatever the game, media, platform, format, genre. Happy gaming, because that's what it's truly about, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. And until I catch you on the next one, please stay blessed. Magan. <laughs>